build a smaller star raker. Thanks for following up for sharing good and bad news. It's still funny. Yeah, sure. I told the man you got to have the sour to appreciate the sweet. He said, sir, we don't have any sweet and sour sauce. This is a Wendy's. Uh, the mini raker. Yeah, there you go. Did he show the dog? I just want to make sure I'm not running over his paws. Stay right there, Taito. That's a shot of his butt. Hey, Taito. Taito. Look at how good this boy is. He's like, what is that thing and why is it near my head? Go, go to sleep. Go sleep, boy. Leg reveal. He's like, can we play or something, man? He looks very wore out. Well, so, BB, he's a... Uh... Titan is a cattle dog mix. He's a, he's a, oh, Thomas here. Bree's here. Where's Dono? He's under my desk. The cattle dog mix. He's a lot of energy, so we tire him out on purpose. Goes for a lot of walks. This dog. So yeah, if he's tired, it's because we ran around in the backyard. What are you looking for? No, but I was just checking your AC. It's really hot in here, and I don't understand. Yeah, trying to work in this all day really sucks. Yeah. How you doing, Taito? You hot? You a hot dog? Yeah, he's all right. All right, you ready to go into the air, air conditioning, sir? I got you orange juice, too. You got me orange juice? Cold cuts? Yeah. Woohoo! Get some cold cuts. And cream cheese. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Screwed up my green screen. You got me the cream cheese, but you screwed up my green screens. Orange, are you mad because I hit a hammer to your four inch door hinge? It's Eminem. Where are you going? I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh boy. I feel better now. Let's play Kerbal. That ring was a very good idea. I got the gnarliest eye roll that dude it was awesome. Made me so happy. Do you still have that space beer from Sam Adams? Yeah, I do, Sawyer. It's probably a little skunky by now, but hang on. Bree's calling me. What?
Warm! All right. Could you give a really quick overview of the engine you made? It is a carbolized replica of a high bypass turbo fan air to turbo Rankin cycle exchange ramjet. I think that's how you say it. Will you drink it if Starship lands? Uh, it is a kerbalized version of that. It is a kerbalized version of a multi-cycle air-breathing engine turbo fan air turbo exchanger ramjet. That. No, you wait till boots on the moon. Don't change that. Okay. Dear God, I never thought I'd see the day. Well, here we are. Did you mod KSP? Been playing a uh, visual modded KSP for like four or five years now, Faze. Where have you been? All right. Let me put the music back on. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hey, Airboris, 7913 sub. Thank you. So, I designed this for a project that we have called Star Raker, or had called, we had called Star Raker. I, I gave a much bigger explanation before that impromptu space news as to what was going on here. And for a PC upgrade for KSP, what should you upgrade? RAM and processor. Okay, bud, you counting flags is revisioning history. What? 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 What did I say? What did I say that was is revisionist history? It's not, King. Piss off. Woosa. I'm playing KSP, leave me alone. All right, here, check this out. I'm going home. Clear a path, mother trucker. Or you were using flags, you were adamant that it wasn't modded. Are you trying to make us lose brain cells, or are you just really good at it? Okay, not gonna lie, I'm just trying it, Tad. <laughs> all right, all right. I don't I, visual visual modded KSP. All right, that's what we're doing. That's what that's what we're doing. All right, all right. Now, I've been running mods with KSP for a long time. Okay, 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 okay. If you want to count that as flags to to 
have your word view be more conforming to reality, go ahead. I don't give up. <laughs> anyway. All right, space, go do it. So this is Star Raker. Star Raker is a heavy lift SSTO that we designed uh, to try and do what the actual one did. Um, the reason why I made a Kerbalized version of this thing is because that's what was needed to make this thing. Star Raker was an awesome idea. Got defunded because priorities changed. Seems to be the topic of the day. It was an idea from the 70s. It was proposed by Rockwell International. The idea was to have a 100 ton horizontal takeoff, horizontal landing SSTO that had a air breathing component and a rocket breathing in a rocket breathing and a rocket component these jet engines would be basically your glorified first stage and in the center you would have three space shuttle engines like i said this was made by rockwell international so it's the same company that made the space shuttle what star raker was designed to do is to be a low cost heavy lift solution to space this was believe it or not before the space shuttle existed the reason why they wanted to do this was because they wanted to use star raker to build gigantic solar arrays in geosynchronous orbit the solar arrays would generate insane amounts of power being well long story short far away from earth's atmosphere solar panels work okay down here but there's an atmosphere in the way there's a lot of gas gas diffuses su sunlight we know that that's why the sun appears to be a different color down here than it does up there and that's why the sun during sunset appears to be a different color. It like kind of is orangey or it could be red. What's happening is that light is getting diffused through more atmosphere than it would be during noontime, during the middle of the day. That's why it appears to change color. The sun actually glows white, if you really want to know. Short story, solar panels work way better up there. So this thing was designed to make gigantic space stations that have solar panel arrays out in geosynchronous. The solar panels would have been like five square miles. You wouldn't have been able to see it even, even that big. It would have been a solar farm on one side and a microwave transmitter on the other side to beam that electrical power back down to Earth for usage for electricity. You can beam electricity through microwaves. Absolutely. Of course it can. You can beam a lot of things through microwaves. But that's what Star Raker was designed to do. The idea it would be is that they would be able that we would be able to go basically green with our power grids and never be energy dependent on anyone. Star Raker the Star Raker project was devised because of as a response to the 1973 energy crisis. Basically Oh, oh, oh this is space. I'm in space. So did we Gifted five subs, thank you very much. It was devised as a program to make the US energy independent because of OPEC doing price controls. What ended up happening is that they started development on it, got to, got started getting into preliminary design, which is what this is right here. That's what this thing is for. And then by the late 70s, the oil prices laxed a little bit and they canceled the project. And they just said, well, this is this would be hard to do. Why don't we just drill for more oil? Don't necessarily have a problem with that, but also I like that energy independence thing. They are Ohm's Pods, Panta. Yeah. Hey, Snow. What's going on? 23 month resub. Is that where James Bond, the James Bond film, got Moonraker from? No. Moonraker uses a space shuttle. Got to see EJ playing KSB again. EJ Project's always blew your mind. Right on, dude. Right on. Does the energy used to evaporate the H2 help turn the turbine in that engine? No, Yannick. It helps cool. It's a pre cooler. This air turbo exchanger is basically a spinning radiator uh that basically it's a it's a prototype it, it's a proto engine pre-cooler it's solving the exact same problem that a saber engine is trying to solve yeah that's what's going on okay so the plan was to microwave birds from space and harness the gravitational potential energy Mechanical Storm, there's so many things that we should have done in the 70s that we didn't because they'd be 
they'd be, it'd be too hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's look, man. Yeah, I just had a huge six hour explanation as to why that whole mentality is the reason why NASA is the position that is in the position that we're in. That's the reason. Uh, it's too hard. Oh, it's too expensive. Oh, it's not feasible. Oh, it's not sustainable. How many more excuses you want to make? I mean, look, it's going to get to the point where any, any, any technology changing or game, any game changing technology is going to take, is going to be difficult. As we push further into space, the difficulty level is not going to get easier. Right? It's not going to get easier to do this stuff. Citing something as cost or blah, 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 blah is basically intentionally stagnating your space program. And guys, if your space program isn't growing, if it's not pushing technological bounds, guess what it's doing? Guess what? It doesn't just stay the same. You're stagnating. Like I said, I won't get too much into it. I just talked about this a second ago. It's true. You're not growing, you're shrinking. There's no third direction. And it's not going to get any damn cheaper. That's a good point. So, anyway, they just they tried to do this. Uh, yeah, it got canceled for the usual suspect reasons. Uh, but we made one in Kerbal just to see if we could a little while back. I made that engine in KSP, or at least an engine that acts very similar to that one within the confines of KSP's weird aerodynamics. Now we put it on Star Raker, and that's all fine and dandy, but the problem is, is that Star Raker is 1,200 parts. There's no guarantees that hitting the launch button right now won't make the thing explode completely when we put it out on the runway. Um, so I basically shelved the project about a year ago. Now, here's the thing. It's a shame because I put a lot of time into these, I call them shrubber engines. Because the the, the shrubbery engine, I think um, it, it, that's based off of a Kerbalized acronym, but it's basically that. It's the multi-cycle air breathing engine turbo fan air turbo exchanger ramjet. We have ramjets in KSP. We have turbofans in KSP. We have air turbo exchangers in KSP in the form of the engine pre-cooler. Multi-cycle means that you can toggle between turbofan, ramjet, and turbo and air turbo exchanger. So that's what we did. I have a ramjet with a high bypass turbofan and an engine pre-cooler baked in there somewhere. I put that inside of a fairing to get the engine to to get the game to basically understand that the engine is one thing. Put it all inside of a fairing, and we attached a pre-cooler and an intake to the front. That's a Kerbalized version of Star Raker's engine. I spent a lot of time getting that right. We spent probably two to three weeks, I'd say. Not a, I said a month before. I'd say two to three weeks just working on the propulsion for this thing. Never mind actually building that. That took a very long time to get that right. And it got to the point where Star Raker, if I can get it to take off, it actually flies great and it can make it up into space. Easy peasy. It just takes three and a half hours because it's 1,200 parts. Kerbal doesn't like simulating thousands of parts like this. I don't think it was ever really built for that. So what I want to do, and this is going to be over the next couple weeks, I'd say, is build a mini Star Raker. I don't want this propulsion technology that we figured out to go to waste. Say These shrubber engines are amazing. They're really good. I should have a tech demonstrator in here. The MCA Bitat curve. Hang on. I made a test, a prototype vehicle here. Huh. 
At least I thought I did. Where the heck is it? <laughs> it's not here. <sighs> yeah, there, there it is. Whatever. Um. Alright, you know what I want to do? I want to try to... Let's try to launch Star Raker. I want to show you these engines in action. Maybe I can get it off the runway. If not, it's going to be a beautiful explosion. Um. Come on, Blen. Tier 3, 32 no month Lisa. Hold on to your butts. You need the glasses? Yeah, probably. This explosion is going to be quite bright. Might need my reading glasses for this. Oh, 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 this is Hold space. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> Dong a dong. Hey, do you have a beginner's guide playlist on YouTube? Uh, stick around here, I'll tell you, figure out how to play this game. Why didn't you use the one by two wing part instead of the two by two? Delta Wing part. Obel converted a Prime sub to a tier one. Thank you. Why didn't I? Uh, some of these don't warrant. You have better control over the shapes with the smaller pieces. All right. There's no guarantees that this is going to work. In fact, it's probably going to end catastrophically bad. Um, so here, enjoy. This could get loud. Headphone users. Joystick isn't working again. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Please. Oh. Okay. Gear up. Oh, that's bad. Okay, no, no, we're good. We're good. We're all right. We're all right. Oh. We 
we are not all right. We broke an elevator. We broke two elevators. Elevate harder, damn it. thing is a behemoth, okay? Are you carrying a mass simulator? No. NASA is uh Yeah, it's going to take forever. We've been flying for 80 seconds. It takes like three hours to get into space. So what I was thinking is take the awesome technology that allows us to do that and maybe scale it down a little bit. It's not the... Guys, don't get confused. It is not the graphics that are holding us back here. It's the fact that there's 1,200 parts flying through the air at supersonic speeds. The game... The game has trouble figuring that out. Yeah, the graphics don't make a difference, hot dog. I got a 3090 Ti, dude. It's... It's... The 3090 Ti is doing nothing. on this top right corner, Elisers. Hey, simulated. No ball as well. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. Alright, we're gonna level off so we can gain some speed here. To be honest, I think hybrid tech elevons would have done you better. It would be more like real life in the garage. 
in a gradual instead of instant motion like the stock control surfaces. These are hybrid tech control surfaces, Aquaplex. Aero forces. The game can't handle it's the tick rate, dude. Because we have such a high part count, it misses a fizz tick and the aero surfaces pop out of their hybrid tech bearings. If we had lower parts, that might work. It's a possibly stupid question, but would KSP have handled this better? No. I wouldn't be able to build this. I wouldn't be able to build this intricate in KSP2. My, uh, my big, a big problem that I had with KSP2 is that the editor controls were, um, what's the right way to say it? Uh, freaking terrible is the answer to that question. No, so no, no, no. Good, Alto. Like I said, you have questions, stick around here. You'll learn how to play this game real quick if I play it more. I have 15,000 hours in KSP. Yeah. Yeah. We built cool stuff. Why not use a mod for scalable wings? Bigger wings equals less parts. Shepard, as somebody that's playing KSP2 and streaming it and making money off streaming it, if people load up into the stream and they see stuff that's unrecognizable, i.e. if you mod KSP to the point where people won't recognize it, you don't get people watching it. So, I build with stock parts. At least I have up until this point. Maybe a little change in the future. I don't know. Thanks, lady. For the longest time, I only built with... Actually, basically, yeah, up until now. I built with stock parts because you have to... You have to make the game recognizable. You sit here and mod out a version of Kerbal to the point where it looks like Orbiter. People won't watch. Did you ever get Linux's cam mod? No, but I have the link open. Altitude for speed. Yep, yep. That's right, Shepard. Uh oh. That's not good. Um, I would re really like it if pieces of the vehicle didn't come off when we were going Mach 1.5. Bearings blue. Uh, I have no control over this vehicle. 
Yeah, uh, inputs aren't doing nothing. It's just... Oh. Oh. Maybe it snapped back into position. Nope. Yeah, we have no control over this. Uh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Let me check something. There is a... Oh, balls. There's a robotic actuator in here somewhere. Yeah, the controls were locked out. That's why my wings weren't working. So we might explode. Okay, cool. We're all on the same page now. Ready? Flutter, flutter, flutter! No, nope. yep, that, oh, balls. Come on, come on, get, pop back into place. She's delaminating, Captain. I can't give it anymore. She's delaminating. Oh, Hello? Uh oh, oh, we're still with it. We're still with it. Seriously though, the the app the app part of the Delta Wing is delaminating, which is mm, not good. Cut the engines. All right. much more of this. Are my engines melting from the inside out? Oh, yes, they are. All right.
Hmm. Yeah, what did we learn about Burning Engine, Rich? So, um, we're dead, uh, for what it's worth, unless, uh, one last thing, pitch is active, authority limiters set it to a high amount, maybe we can overcome the moment of our damaged wings forcing us down into the ground. Hey. coming up awfully fast. Oh, good. The fuel line is broken. Prop feed to all engines. Unless... Oh, come on. I don't think we're coming out of this one, guys. We still have negative pitch moment. Maybe? Nope. We're going Mach 1. Or close to it. Yeah, just shut the engine off and... Drift to sleep. <laughs> yeah, watch it. Kerbal overdrives the sound when a lot of parts hit the water all at once. Headphone users. I'm serious. Turn your turn your volume down now. I did turn the sound down just to be sure. Yeah, that's about all you would find from this couple of landing gears, and that's about it. Anyway, yeah. That is the exact reason why... I mean, well, I actually figured out what was wrong with that thing. But it, it does like to explode under certain circumstances. So, that's too many parts. It takes way too long to get up into space. So we're going to make a smaller version. Smaller version. Yeah, yeah, Panta, yep. Smaller, unsub. I want to utilize this engine. How much smaller? How about four shrubber engines and one shuttle engine? 
instead of 10 shrubber engines and three shuttle engines. Use flags, wing textured flags. Why would I, why would I do that? How many parts is this? 684. Someone say shrubbery? Yes. Flags are physics lists. So why would I make my wing something that I need for the thing to fly out of a part that's physicsless? Yeah, that's a Venture Star, guys. Uh, I just wanted to see something real quick. Star Raker air breathing engine component. Oh, the shrubber. Yeah. Me and 95 been doing it. Most stuff has too much lift anyway. Now I really don't want to do it, Ben. You didn't just you didn't help your case at all. It is a turbo ramjet mage, yeah. You know what? I got an idea. Let's put this on a test aircraft for now. Uh, I know the perfect one. Find it there in the city. I'm space newsed out today, George. see what this engine can do by itself uh let's see what just one of these things can do so i put it on our xb70 clone here because it's a great great test bed for testing this kind of thing and now we send it
Jeez. Do E E T quack quack. What? What the hell was that? Do it quack quack. Hundred bucks. Jeez. Okay. Thank you so much, whoever Canard is. I mean, I kind of hate you, but whatever. I was just waiting for something to have Canards. He has, he has Canards on it because the XP70 actually has Canards on it too. Six no, month lease up. Thank you. The joystick doesn't work. Discovery, go and throttle up. Motorman in six years. Wow, thank you for the years of quality content and community. Here's to many more. Thank you. And Ark, thank you for the 46, dude. How you doing? Nova. All right, I got to go into my action groups here, and I need to have an action group that toggles the Main engines off. What we're gonna do here is this. We're gonna see what the shrubber engine does here. I hate flying with the keyboard.
Yeah, Fatal L, that's exactly what it is. It's a, a Shrubber engine. Guys, this is a engine from a real life project called Star Raker. I just made a Kerbalized version and it it acts the same, but it's, yeah, it just look, doesn't look exactly like it, but it acts the same. Hey, Bari, what's going on? Anyway, Bernard tipped a hundred bucks. Who was that? For real. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. It's been a weird day, dude. It has been a day of mixed emotions. These are... This is our thrust output. Those two numbers combined for that engine. to get up to the right altitude here for the ramp for the ramjet part to kick in that's good enough Yo, Anth, what's going on, buddy? 88 month resub. Thank you. Horizontal takeoff, horizontal landing, single stage to orbit. I'm building uh, something that's kind of based off of North uh, Nor uh, Rockwell International Star Raker. I clicked on this and I have no idea what this guy is doing. I'm new to KSP, by the way. I have a plane that I already built, new account, and I'm using it to test a prototype engine that I made in KSP. Prototype engine is supposed to be a Kerbalized version of that. If it looks complicated, yes it is. 
The idea is that it's an engine that can fly at extremely high altitude, extremely fast. What I'm trying to do in KSP today is at least work on some technologies to be able to make a plane that can take off from a runway and just fly right up into space. It's rocket science. That's, that's Kerbal, dude. The game that I'm playing is called Kerbal Space Program. It's a game where you design and build rockets and then fly them into space. Cool thing about it is that it's not the most, like the highest fidelity space flight simulator or like aerodynamic simulator, but it's good enough to get the point across. I can use it to build cool stuff. So we wouldn't have to use rockets anymore. Um, Vare, yes and no. This particular engine would be employed with a rocket engine, so I'd have these and a rocket for my second stage, you know what I mean? You think they'll make a sequel? No. Nope. You're trying to do escape trajectory to test an engine right now. Cool. Yeah. That one engine is enough, to, is enough to keep us flying up here. If we had two, this thing would go to space, man. Oh, I'll act like I'm smart enough to understand. Vari, long story short, take this, go fast with rocket engine, get to space. This plane that it's on right now is just a test bed. I'm just testing propulsion. Yeah, sure, RG. You aren't even at airliner speed, though. Yeah, I, I, you're not wrong, Corey. Um, I have all the other engines on this aircraft off. This is just one engine propelling this entire thing. This is, once again, we're just testing. We're just testing. I'll, I haven't made the plane that I'm describing just yet. What's the altitude for space? In Kerbal, it's 70 kilometers. In real life, it's 100 kilometers. Kind of does, POTUS, right? What made you want to build a new SSTO? I just picked something that I thought would be cool because people wanted me to play Kerbal again, so I found something that I wanted. Discovery. Toy D, 93 months. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is about our operational limit. If this thing can catch the ramjet, then we might be able to go faster. Let's see. Long time no see, dude. I think it's enough, Tessa, to catch that runaway thrust.
Knock indicators over there. What's the mass of this craft? Uh, 70 tons. Yeah, health is just pretty cool. Alright, slow down. Cut in the main engines again. This is a uh, representation of an XB-70 Valkyrie, guys. This is actually based off of a real airplane. to go see it sometime. The XP-70? Yeah, you're not wrong. Okay, we need to get back to the runway. Mythbusters this test, full throttle, all engines. It is, RJ, yeah. Have you tried your hand at making a dark star? I've made stuff like that, Maureen, yeah. Falcon? No, I've made an X-Wing, though. That's a flame-out on the bypass turbo fan. We're working straight off straight ramjet. Now, turn? I would really rather not do that. If they would fatal owl, yeah, not none of this. It's just to look cool and terrible.
put the XB70? Yeah, with the with a ramjet attached to the top. Actually, for whatever reason, with my XB70, I put four J58s on it. Those are SR71 engines, which is not what the Valkyrie had in real life. Valkyrie had an afterburning turbo turbojet. Still a nice test, nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> Arthur did. Yeah, yeah, for real. I was just using this to test out my new kind of engine design. Kit hack is absolutely worth it, dogs. You should buy it and play it. It's made by the same guy that made KSP. Good buddy of mine. We are not in orbit, Guild. No, not even close. Actually, we're about half. Eh, like maybe 45% of the way there. your orbital information we're not even close to orbit guys not even close do you have fly out yes yaman fly out's pretty cool i made a t38 in it it works pretty much exactly like a t38 How far did you get to this in the Star Raker project? I just flew it and it came apart on the way up, Rem. I want to basically build a smaller Star Raker. Yeah, I want to build a smaller one. The reason why I want to build a smaller one is because of the high part count. So maybe instead of like a hundred ton payload capacity, we give it a 30 ton payload capacity and make it so it's actually usable in some way, shape or form. I just flew it a second ago, dude, believe it or not. <laughs> Dumb question, but is the timing accurate or would it take longer? Far right now. Okay, we get, well, 36 tons, Talon, that's fine. Procedural wings would bring the car part count into line. They would also make it not perform the same way because you're changing the aerodynamics. Pretty good.
No, Iger. Why? I still don't get what exactly you did. If I understand it right, you got the jet engine and injecting additional air and fuel exhaust to make it from less than stick with the nozzle to create additional thrust. No, Joker. Honestly, this is just a turbo... Dude, you're overthinking it. The parameters would be exactly the same for this if I just put a Goliath engine on the side here and put another Ram Gen on the side. What this does is combine them aerodynamically into one unit. That's all. If I had an engine here, if I just put that ramjet on the back of the turbofan, right? Kerbal would see this as two engines flying through the air. Because they're inside of the fairing with the pre-cooler up front, you can't put an intake inside of a fairing, right? So you had to put the you had to put this out in front. This just tells Kerbal that this is one piece. That's all. The thrust numbers are the same. That's the trick. That's the trickery to it. The fairing is occluding the engines, and you get less drag this way. Yeah, that's all, dude. Yeah, Corey, it's always the standard test mass. Exactly. Man, we went far. Where the heck is KS... Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, we went really far. So, like, check it out. I select the whiplash. Here's the trickery, okay? I select the whiplash. Look, the whiplash is occluded. See? It's not making any drag. See what I'm talking about? The fairing is. See what I mean? Pretty cool, huh? If you select this... Well, the Goliath is flamed out right now, but if we activated it, check it out. It's making thrust. But it's not making any drag. But... Because we have an open fairing, we tricked Kerbal into basically thinking that this is one engine. This is cursed beyond all reason. I'm using an XB70 as a test bed for, for, t for testing this. This, we're not making the XB70 go up into space. What we will do is design a fuselage for this engine and then make that go up into space. Nah, I get it. I meant with the fairings. Ah, that's fine. Can you fly all the engines in reverse? No. Getting KSP to do real physics is always cursed. Oh, uh, yeah, let me tell you. The amount of trickery I needed to do to get the my KSB shuttle to fly like the actual shuttle. Want to see? Want to see? You want to see? Here, show you. <laughs> Sneeze. Now, we're a little bit out of time tonight, but... Digital pimp, hard to pay no attention to these hypocrites, Arnok. To deny our own instinct is to deny the very thing that makes us human. Oh no, he's just gonna show off the shuttle again. The space shuttle does not fly very well in real life. It flies just good enough to be able to land, so the only way I could really get this thing to work like the real shuttle is to attach a bunch of panels to it. Panels are not very aerodynamic. Neither are tiles for what it's worth. Fine. My external tank I built out of a bunch of fairings to make it the right scale. Five meter is not the correct scale for a shuttle external tank with the shuttle fuselage that we have. That hurts.
Yeah, Dragless Fairing's new account. It's a thing. People have done some pretty savage stuff in KSP. Here, you want to see one of my weirdest creations? Watch this. Here, this is the trash can. The trash can. With dragless fairings, yeah, new account. People do that all the time. Clip an urban to this rubber, you can make a dual engine SSTO that runs entirely on liquid. Yeah, of course. And if I put this, if I put this thing in the back, it wouldn't need any engines. But you didn't show the shuttle. You didn't show the shuttle how it flies. I was more showing the panels off on a Joker. I'm gonna fly the dang thing and put. But why do that when you could watch this? El Cacharro de Basura, sí. No, not docking ports. We're gonna have to go right to ludicrous speed. What's the matter, chat? Chicken? I'm sorry, what did, what did I just walk in on? This is the trash can. Physics would like to have a word. Yeah, Tokyo's fine. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you're gonna see some serious stuff. Aiden, you're from NSF? Well, welcome.
Isn't it doing? Why? Interesting. It's not doing it, guys. Whoa! Somebody gifted mage a sub. Thank you very much. What the hell? Why wouldn't? Why aren't you trash can? Why? There's no way they patched it, Tessa. We broke it. Oh well. I have no idea, Ants. I'm not showing the secret sauce. We'll have to figure that out off stream. You let out the magic smoke! Yeah, you let out too much magical pixie dust that, yeah, it doesn't get happy. Hmm. Well, that's weird. Anyway, 841. Yeah, I don't got nothing. That thing should have shot off into the sky. We should be at we should be at Elu by now. But it didn't do it. touring vessel. Oh, and she goes, dude. How do you only have 1.5k subscribers? Paul, I stream on Twitch. It's only very recently that I started streaming on YouTube, dude. Yeah, I've been streaming on Twitch for 10 years. Uh, 11 and a half years. Uh, Twitch recently went lax with their rules, and now I can simulcast to YouTube. That's how I only have that many subscribers, dude. Yeah, I build all kinds of cool stuff, man. Here, this, this is one you might like. I have to turn it on its side to get it to fit in here. Maybe if you're a tank watcher from NSF, you might might realize what that is. Love you from NSF. There you go. Thanks, Paul. Right on. 1,500 in that small amount of time? That's actually super good. How well does that work? Yeah. Do you have something that barely makes it to orbit? Those are fun. Space Taxi, my newest one is only 15 tons, 200 Delta V left. Uh... I mean, my shuttle barely makes it to orbit, but that's by design. I've been wondering who else he was talking to. Yeah.
How did you learn all your rocket stuff? Just passion or do you have industry experience? I've worked with NASA, dude, but that's just hosting panels with NASA at TwitchCon. I haven't worked for NASA. I've worked with them on tons of stuff, like in communications and whatnot. When it comes to industry experience, I don't have. No, I pay attention. I have a really good memory and I read a lot. Everything that I've learned about rockets is self-taught through reading, learning, and honestly, prototyping some of these ideas and building them out in KSP is very... Um, it's a very good way to show how complicated some of this systems engineering is. In fact, that's what I would say I'm the best at, understanding the macro picture of spaceflight. Um, because I've done it in KSP. I don't just build launch vehicles, I build everything. Yeah, I think that's important to understand, dude. I have, you know, it turns out that if you host a stream about rocket science, playing a game about rocket science, right? You're gonna get people that work in the industry. I have people that work all over the place, dude. I know people that work with, like, SpaceX, for instance. I know people that work at NASA. I know people that work at Firefly, Rocket Lab. Pick your pick your spaceflight company. I know people. I probably know people that work there. Um, I have a lot of a lot of my buddies are in the Space Force. Uh, there's a lot of viewers that watch from uh, space that work in the Space Force. Um, and having that insight like i said i got a steel trap for memory um having that insight is actually super helpful and it helps me learn and i've been doing it for a decade I've been honing my skills here i don't know if i know anybody at stoke i definitely know a couple people at blue yeah yeah you could say that and new glens that's right you know every cashier at IGA. Well, damn, aren't you special? What the frick is that? Oh, yeah. That's still there. I was testing something the other day. Yes, that is exactly what you think it is. Well, that's not good for it. Yep, my joystick isn't working, so yeah. I'm afraid Super Heavy is gonna do that to Mechazilla, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, it works, I just need the joystick. Yeah, that's from the Nova stream, yep, yep. How about Boston Dynamics? Ironically, Kyle, I don't know anybody from Boston Dynamics weird because I used to live down the street from Boston Dynamics. Working on this lander design, I got a bit of wasted space on the top side tank. Any ideas? Honestly, Zay, if it does what you want it to do, it doesn't matter. It, if it does what you want it to do and it works fine, don't worry about it. I'm sure you do a lot of them are former SpaceX guys. Maybe, Corey, who knows? But yeah, this was a Mechazilla prototype we did. But yeah, Paul, I'm totally self-taught, but I have a lot of very helpful mentors in the industry that help me with things. We make all kinds of cool stuff. Back to story. What is it supposed to do? You're supposed to catch it. It's supposed to catch this little uh, hopper thing with Jigger. Right on. Never know where you might end up in the future. Thanks. Like here. Here's a good example. Reusable launch pad. 
right there. It's designed for launching a small sat launcher like, oh, I don't know, Electron. No reason to launch an Electron. It's a reusable launch pad. You can put another stage on it, turn it upright, fuel up your tank farm, launch it, do it again. That was a small one. I've built heavy lift launch vehicle launch pads and reused the launch vehicle. Like I said, I don't just build the rock, we build everything. Try to build out every single piece of the design. Like here, here's another project that I worked on a little while back. Oh, this was a mod, this was a model of, this isn't the one I was thinking of. This is a model of the Liberty Station. Liberty Station was a station that I launched entirely integrating payloads outside of the VAB in KSP. I built my own VAB, rolled the payload to the pad on a trailer like what actually happens and then stack the payload and launch it. It was serviced by a reusable shuttle, that thing. Dark. Uh, which ended up not being really reusable and killed Jeb in that save, but yeah, you get the idea. We should redo Dart. Maybe we shouldn't do the Shrubber Engines. Maybe we should try to develop a new Dart. I don't know. I'll think about it. Let me check this out. So this was a master file for a space program that I did. Um, keep in mind, this is all stock parts, but with flags, with textured flags. Um, this, I don't know, you guys probably recognize it. Um, I built out the entire station first and then broke it down into components and then launched it on a space shuttle. I did this to show how they put together the... Um, International Space Station. The poor Dart didn't actually return to Earth. Freedom Architecture. Yeah, we were cooking with that, Raja. Maybe we shouldn't do an SSTO. Maybe we should... Uh... Yeah, listeners, I used the shuttle that I showed a little while ago to make this thing. This is a mechanical and visual replica of Space Station Freedom, the revised baseline segment of Space Station Freedom. How many trips did it take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So you're not gonna push the bounds. Nice. Can I, like, you, you, you know, fish for a little while? You wouldn't take it personally, would you? I mean, I hope you kind of do. But... A B-1? Oh, Maureen, I've made, I've made swept wing planes before. Um, yeah, I made a B-1, I made an F-14 one time. Yeah, this, once again, this mechanically works just like the ISS. Um, or at least Space Station Freedom. can't make the same mechanical style solar panel that they have on the ISS or Freedom, so that works. And check that out on top of everything. I never coded any sun tracking for this, Corey, but what I did do... When I put the space station up at like a hundred kilometers circular, I checked the orbital period. So say it took, I don't know, 15 minutes to do an orbit at a hundred kilometers. 
I have a cal controller that's designed to rotate the panels over time. I just have it as a miscellaneous programmable controller. Uh, actually, no, the miscellaneous was separate. I have an SOP, the solar orbital period. I basically just make a cal controller. We open the editor, right? And we add, when we're up on orbit, we configure it for the orbital period, add the servo, load the servo into the cal controller, right? And while I'm up on the station doing whatever, I play the cal controller and it basically tracks the sun. Yeah, so like if I was up on orbit moving modules around or docking to the space station, I would switch to the station fast. Activate the controller and as we dock to the space station, you could see the solar panels moving. They would track the sun. Keeps power up on the space station. So arguably no, but functionally yes. Pretty much, Mage. Yep. New season of Snowpiercer has started. Okay. The arm is stowed right now. There's the fine control deploy sequencer. Come on, Cameron. See? Check this out. We even have the mobile base system. A lot, a lot of people know that the ISS actually has a little railroad on it. The arm can attach to the mobile base, and it can move along the truss segment like that. That's how NASA actually does service out on the ends of the truss segment. I love the MLV architecture. Would love to see that have a pad of its own. MLV? There was a Kraken Tech arm on there at one point. That was a really, really old station design, Draenor. Yeah, you're talking a station design from a decade ago. Yeah, there was a time where I made this. I made a robotic arm using a bunch of SAS and RTGs. Free robotics. Yep, yep. That's right. Yeah, I built this about last year at this. No, actually, this was about a year. But yeah, that's... um. That's how it works. The robotics are super difficult to use unless they have software, kinematic soft, inverse kinematic software guiding them. It gets really difficult. There's Jebstone, one of my favorite lifters that I've ever made. It's a Clydesdale with an upper stage, and that's it. It can do 18 tons into orbit. 18 tons into orbit for 80 parts, and it's recoverable. The, the booster actually parachutes down. It's inspired from Ares-1, one, one of my favorite, favorite rockets that never flew. Was it the shuttle or station arm that borked itself when you were building the station? I ran into a really weird use case rem where the arm would come unpowered and during time warp it would scramble itself. Scramble itself. You guys wanted a pad for MLB, huh? Okay, now then. I still say the best pad you built was Condor.
MLV is a good design. That's the rocket that was sitting outside. Landed. This, the cool thing about... The cool thing about my medium launch vehicle design is this. Um, watch. It has Falcon 9's landing legs on. At least a kerbalized version of them. But Falcon 9's landing legs nonetheless. How are you saving boosters? If I attach parachutes to them, they disappear. Joker. All right. It's the last thing I'm going to do. Guys, I'm getting tired. We, we ended up getting trick all done for that SSTO. So what I might... Guys, what I'm thinking about doing is maybe build a better dart. How cool would it be to build a better dart and put it on MLB? That would be, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, that would be really difficult. I don't know if I have the chops for that right now. I'd have to, I have to get back in. I need, I've been trying to pick a project in KSP that's not too ridiculously complicated. Dark point out. There's a trick that you can do with the flight trajectory joker basically have to start juggling this stuff around. I'll show you what I mean. Actually, Gravshark, if we were going to do Dart 2.0, what I would probably end up doing is removing the landing gear entirely. Make it land like IXV or I IVX. Basically, get Dart next to KSC, pull a parachute, just have it set down there have been re-entry vehicles built like that in the past to simplify the design i would do that because dart actually did okay it actually flew all right it was the landing gear it's too light for the for the lightest landing gear in the game and that's what caused problems IXV. I'll show you. No, thank you. The IXV is basically a lifting body prototype. They launched it in 2015, and IXV is a little, it's like a tiny little mini shuttle. They launched it, and it, they landed it. And it, but it doesn't land with landing gear. It just lands with a parachute. Just gets near where they want it to land, and then they land it. Let's see. And then they promptly never used it again. Isn't there one with skids? If I remember right, JAXA did something like that too. So I'll show you. I'll show you how to recover your stage. In Kerbal, if you're flying a vehicle around and you have a first stage that falls if it goes below 25,000 meters the game will assume that it's debris and it'll delete it unless you switch back to it before it goes below 25 g's previews tomorrow i'm going to see def leppard and journey and steve miller band in detroit oh crap guys the joystick isn't working i gotta get my joy okay i promise you I will show you this tomorrow. The joystick is a, I I can't do it without a joystick. It's not it's not nigh impossible, but um. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be something that I need the joystick to do. 
uh i fly with the logitech extreme 3d pro this thing is already difficult enough to land but yeah this thing it'll shoot the second stage off and this long story short when i stage joker i separate I switch back to the first stage. I turn the first stage around. We do the boost back burn like Falcon 9. And then the first stage gets an apogee over 70. Right? It goes up into space. When it's up into space, I switch back to the second stage, circularize the second stage, and then switch back to the first stage before it goes below 25, bring it right down and land it. What happened to the joystick? I don't know, Rem. I'll... Yeah, I'll show you how this all works tomorrow. It's basically a nice juggling act. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, once again, I will show you this tomorrow. I'll show you MLB and how it works. Uh, but yeah, I got to figure out what's going on. Something with the computer and the joystick is being weird. And I don't like troubleshooting on stream. It, Yeah, I don't like doing that. Your friend got some tickets fairly close to the stage on the field. That's cool, Grav. That's going to be a great show. Is this EJ live? Hi, William Foss. Sending that message at 9.06 p.m. Eastern Time on July 17th, 2024. It's tough to keep track of everybody trying to help. Yes, so can't argue that. <laughs> You're catching me on the tail end, though, dude. Um, so, guys, I'll show you this. We'll play KSP tomorrow. Um, I have to stop the stream at 7 tomorrow uh, because uh, I need to go pick up uh, my father-in-law at the airport because we're going to Cletus and Cars, the New England 900, on Friday and Saturday. So, yeah. I'll do another nice long stream for you guys tomorrow or uh, tomorrow, er, next week. Tomorrow's going to be about a seven-hour stream, which is nothing for me. Pre-recorded, but it's really good. Wrenching tomorrow? I was going to do wrenching tomorrow, all systems, but uh, NASA deciding to proverbially kick me in the nuts a couple of times prevented me from getting what I wanted to get done today in Kerbal. So I think I'll do wrenching in the morning off stream, and then we'll play KSP tomorrow. I'll show you guys how MLB works. Hopefully you get to me by script. I'm hoping so, Anesthesis. That would be cool. Tell Derek hi for you. Hope you meet Cleet. Dingleberg, if I do get to meet Cleeter, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be like, yo, you know that guy on NASA space flight that has the Cletus hat? Yeah, that's me. And I want to see what he does. I want to see if he'd be like, oh, brother. <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, I'll talk to you guys all... Um, I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. Let's see who we can raid. I like watching, I like winding down watching Etel play Star Citizen. So we're going to raid him again. And um, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. We'll play KSP again tomorrow, okay? I have to get back into the group. We have to keep... We have to keep doing it. We'll play it again tomorrow, and then I'll figure out what I what I what we really want to do. I I thought SSTO would probably be something fun, but I don't know. I also want to. I also have unfinished business with Dart. I really want to fix that thing. So we'll see. Anyway, go see what Etel's up to. If you're on the YouTube side of things, thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I'm only at 1,500 subscribers over on YouTube. I'd like to get that number up because if we can get the YouTube monetization going, um, I can make more money to blow on stupid car parts and maybe rockets and stuff. I'm not going to lie. That's what I use it for. So, anyway, it was an amazing 30 seconds. All right, William, I'll see you tomorrow, dudes. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night, everybody. Go, ra go raid Atel. I'll talk to you later.